Good evening. We begin tonight on a battlefield with no borders in the shadowy world of cyber crime, where, for the very first time ever, the United States is charging five military officials from China with hacking into the headquarters of several American companies and flat out stealing. Their faces are now plastered all over this new FBI Most Wanted poster. In this modern war, the fight is for information, a leg up on the competition. The weapons are computers. CTV's Washington Bureau Chief Paul Workman has the details. It is highly unusual, unique even, to release photos of the suspects like this, to put the names and faces of Chinese army officers on wanted posters, but this whole case is unique. For the first time, we are exposing the faces and names behind the keyboards in Shanghai used to steal from American businesses. The five officers allegedly working out of this building in Shanghai, home to Unit 61398 of the People's Liberation Army, and the mission they're accused of, hacking into the computers of big American companies and stealing trade secrets. The range of trade secrets and other sensitive business information stolen in this case is significant. The victims were some of the biggest corporate names in America. U.S. Steel, where 1,753 computers were hacked. Westinghouse Electric, where hackers stole design secrets for a nuclear power plant. A solar panel company, Solar World, where hackers stole cost and pricing information as the Chinese flooded the market with cheaper imports. I am saying that this cyber hacking leads directly to the loss of jobs here in the United States. And to the more serious level of criminal indictment. Not that China will ever turn the suspects over for prosecution. What are the chances that they will show up in the court of law in the United States? There, there are absolutely no chance that they will show up in court. No this this, this won't go to trial. This, at one level, uh, was a symbolic gesture. But it's a very important symbol. China responded by calling the charges extremely absurd and a pure fabrication as the Americans threaten to make indictments like this a regular event unless the hacking stops, Lisa. Okay, and there is the unknown. All right, Paul, thank you for this tonight. So what does China do now? It's Tuesday morning in Beijing, and Bureau Chief Janice Mackey frere joins us. Janice, these charges may be symbolic, as Paul reports, but they're also serious, so how does China fight back? Well, the reaction will be angry. China sees itself as the victim of cyber espionage and cyber theft, not the perpetrator. So there could be some sort of countercharge against the U.S. You'll remember last year, China felt vindicated when Edward Snowden revealed evidence the U.S. had hacked into China's network. So it accuses the U.S. of hypocrisy in that sense. Uh, China overall views these charges as a fabrication. It, it, it's a loss of global face. And it will be played out geopolitically. These these are the two biggest economies in the world, so bad relations can take several forms. Ironically, Lisa, it comes at a time when Russian President Vladimir Putin uh, is visiting today in what observers see as warmer ties between the two countries, with Russia uh, renewing its pivot east, having angered the rest of the world. Mm, okay, more to come on that story. Janice, thanks for this today from 